Hooke's law is a law that applies to springs. Here we have a spring with a mass on the end. Now we know that that force that's pulling on the spring is the weight of that object. If the spring is in equilibrium, we also know that the tension in the spring pulling the other way has to also be equal to mg. It stands to reason that if we double the mass on a spring, we're doubling the force, and we should be doubling how far this spring stretches. Here's our spring with no load on it at all, and here it is with a weight on the end. Using the bottom of the coil, we can see that this is our extension here. Now this is measured in meters, and it's given the symbol delta L, or in other words, change in length of the spring. You might also see it written as E. You might even see it written as X. Personally, X is the one that I prefer for extension. Like we said, if you double the force, then you double the extension. So that must mean that force is proportional to extension. Don't forget that that could be delta L, or it could be E. So to turn this into an equation with an equal sign, we need a constant, and we just give that constant the letter K. This is what we call the spring constant, also called stiffness sometimes. The bigger the spring constant is for a spring, the harder it is to extend. If we rearrange Hooke's law real quick, then we find that K equals F divided by X. So it's gonna have the unit newtons per meter. We could write it n slash m. Now if we wanted to find out the spring constant for a spring, all we have to do, all we have to do is get different masses and see how far the spring extends. And we should get a nice straight line, provided that the spring is acting elastically. That means that if you take the load off, it'll go back to zero extension. And the gradient of this line there's our change in Y, okay, it's changing M. This is our change in X, then our gradient is equals to M over X. And if the gradient is equals to M over X, we know that the spring constant is the force divided by extension, but we know that force is MG divided by X. So what is our gradient giving us? It's giving us this here. But to find out K, we can do gradient, times g, which is going to be 9.8 if we're on Earth. Now this is the easiest way of doing it. We could alternatively draw a graph of force against extension, and the gradient is k already. So if you get given a graph like that, you know how to find the spring constant. But the problem with this is that you have to convert your mass into force first. So that means timesing every mass in kilograms by 9.8. And so you end up with some really weird numbers. So the best thing to do is this here, just do mass against extension, and then you get your gradient times it by G to get the spring constant. So here's our graph again. I'm just gonna go straight for F and extension this time, force and extension. There's a nice straight line. Now it turns out that we can find out the energy stored in a spring up to a particular point. Let's say we're stretching a spring up to this point here. It turns out the energy stored in the spring is equals to the area under the graph. So the gradient of this will give you K, and the area will give you energy stored, so that's elastic potential energy. So this elastic potential energy we're finding out the area of a triangle, so that's gonna be equals to half Fx. But hang on a second, we know that F is equals to Kx. So the final form of potential energy stored in the spring is half times Kx times x. So that gives us half Kx squared. So that's how we find out the energy stored in the spring, half times the spring constant, times the extension squared. Find it out either way, either using the force, or if you've got the spring constant, you can go straight for that. What about if we had two springs 
that are connected and we have a force pulling downwards, F there. This has a spring constant K, this has a spring constant K, but what is the overall spring constant for this? Each spring has a force of F pulling down on it and they both have the same spring constant. So this spring at the top is going to extend by X. This spring is also going to extend by X. So that means that we get twice the extension. What does that mean? The overall spring constant of this is K over two. What about if we have springs in parallel instead? In this case, the force is getting shared across both springs. So we get half the extension. In other words, the overall spring constant is doubled. So springs in series, twice the extension. So that means that the spring constant is halved. Springs in parallel, the force is shared. That means we get half the extension that we would do with one spring. So the overall spring constant has doubled. If you do an A-level, then the next thing to look at is Young's modulus, which uses some of the same ideas from Hooke's law, but applies it to all materials. If you have any questions or you think I've missed anything out, then please put a comment down below and I'll see you next time.